We understand an upside-down world. But they're writing us off before we get to the starting line. A stalled generation? Who do you think is gonna fix all this? We will. Because our future is the future. So we're going to build bridges and hospitals in a day. And feed those left in the cold. We're going to do all this and more because we have an appointment with destiny. What's happening, sports fans? We welcome you into uh, one of the few times that uh, I am wearing this SDSU gear today, not because we are talking to an SDSU alum, but just because they got the dub today in March Madness. Um, so we're crossing all sorts of streams. We're crossing colleges. We're crossing sports. We've got a baseball player on with us. We're talking basketball already. I'm sure I'm confusing him. It's Max Murray. He is committed to play baseball at the University of California, Berkeley. So uh, you might be sensing a trend early on this year in terms of the players that we are interviewing is that something the Berkeley coaching staff did down here is uh, successful in terms of grabbing the best players. He, though, right now is a junior at Coronado. So we got to talk about a lot of things. Uh, let's start, though, with that commitment. You are a year off uh, until you ultimately head off there because you are a junior now. But uh, that is also sometimes impressive to know that someone can make that kind of a decision, uh, you know, with plenty of time left to think it over. So why Cal? Yeah, Cal is a school that checked off all my boxes, you know, throughout my sophomore summer, I I was making sure that every box was covered. So what stood out to me at Cal was obviously the athletic program, the academics, the location, the coaching staff, and everything just really fit into place. And, you know, during the summer, I was playing with USA Prime Nationals. So going out to Texas and going out to those East Coast schools was brutal with all the location and all the weather. So I definitely knew I was the West Coast guy. And Cal just totally fit for me. So Berkeley, always the dream school then or just kind of fell into your lap through the the process of meeting a coach? What actually ended up being, you know, how you arrived at Berkeley? Yeah, I fell in love with Cal when I got there, you know, meeting Noah Jackson, Matt Flemmer, Mike New. Uh, I mean, it just felt like home immediately getting there. So for me, it was a no doubt decision, um, obviously going through other schools and visiting them. But Cal just felt immediately like home. So I just fell in love with it, being there, being around those guys and the competitiveness over there is great. And uh, not a bad education as well from everything that I've heard. Obviously, um, I, uh, you can, I can show you guys over here in the studio. I went to the Baby Bear School. Um, did not get into the higher academic institution, uh, the more classical one and yada, yada, yada. So you, you Berkeley kids are pretty dang smart. Any idea what you would want to study um, when you get there? Not yet. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards a business kind of way to go, but right now I'm still kind of undecided, but something, you know, something, but, but definitely not pre-med or so, like you've ruled at least certain things out is what you're saying. Yeah, definitely for sure. But you know, just kind of that business, maybe finance, you know, whatever, whatever I feel like is the best for me in the well, future. You got you to gotta do something so that you can be like a Lamar Jackson, just represent yourself as your own agent. Yeah. I'm, that'd be great too. You know, you never know. Would you do that? Have you, I don't know if you, have you followed him at all in the last year or two as he's been trying to negotiate with uh, the Ravens? Do you follow the NFL at all? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, that's definitely cool to do. I mean, it feels well, we'll a happen. little risky at the same time. And I don't know, man. I, and I know that you are years off from being a pro athlete. Uh, so we'll, we'll mark the tape right now and let's have this, let's pick this discussion up in, in a decade uh, after you've made your first pro contract, but I, it feels risky, man. It feels really risky. Yeah. It's definitely a cool thing. To do. Yeah. Well, we, we will see how it all pans out. So, okay. You've decided on Berkeley. You've decided on Berkeley early. You talked about playing off season, You've, you're playing in you know in the high school seasons. Look, man, getting to the point where you're at is not that easy. It requires a lot of moving parts, a lot of moving pieces. And so maybe what's some advice now that you've gone through this whole process that you would have for kids, middle school, early in high school, where you know somewhere along, but just in the beginning of the recruiting process that maybe don't know how to you know really be their own advocate. Yeah, I, I would definitely say to make sure all your boxes are checked a thousand percent. You know, you got to know what kind of guy you are. If you're a West Coast guy, if you're an East Coast guy, um, obviously feeling out, you know, what education, you know, obviously looking into the majors. Because when I committed to Cal, I looked at all the majors and made sure, you know, most of them are something I wanted to pursue. Um, obviously, the athletic program, you know, I felt like Cal fit me perfectly with everything. So 
honestly, for kids, you know, looking for to commit or, you know, just starting to begin the process, I would definitely recommend to, you know, just let let it go with the flow. You know, that's what I did. Um, I had my choice of schools. And, you know, when I eventually went went and saw Cal, it was a no doubt decision for me. So just to just stay through the process and make sure it's the right school for sure. Let's talk about the Coronado season. Uh, you guys are four and two at the time of us recording this. Two losses being East Lake and Grossmont, you know, nothing bad about those losses per anybody in this count. Like if any team, if you told me that RB lost to those school, two schools or LCC or Grand or anyone, I'd be like, all right, yeah, dope. Like that's baseball. It happens. So you guys got to be pretty happy. Yeah. Yeah. We've had early success. You know, we're, we're definitely on the come up. We have a lot of young guys. Um, so making sure all those guys are in check and, you know, it's a role I've taken on and, you know, I have to give a shout out to Ryan Ward. Um, when I was a freshman, you know, I was a young kid, so um, he's always kept me in check. So I kind of learned from him. Um, so right now, I'm, you know, we're, we have early su success and we plan to keep that. Big fan of Ryan Ward on this show. So always appreciate a shout out directed at him. Uh, you are one of two guys on this pitching staff that has touched the low 90s. That's got to be kind of fun. Um, is that the signature that people can expect this season from you guys? Is that you're pitching heavy and everything else is still developing? Or or what is your style as a team out there on the diamond? Yeah, you know, personally, I, I don't really worry about velocity right now throughout the season. I'm worried Nobody about ever does, but it's still fun to say, man. It, come on, you got to admit, it's still fun to say. Yeah, it's fun. It's it's cool to know that, you know, the plan and everything put together is is working out, which you know, I mean, right now I'm just making myself uncomfortable, honestly, at the plate, you know, whatever height, low 90s is cool. But, you know, making sure my slider is low and away, my changeups are down and in, you know, just making sure I'm maximizing these hitters because at the next level, that's what it's going to take. So just making sure I'm dominating on that side, you know, velocity will always come after and I'm still a junior. So, um, you know, that just comes after. But for right now, I'm just worried about maximizing my secondaries and making sure I'm dominating right now. So you're personally getting dialed in with those secondary and tertiary pitches. That's obviously what people can expect from one of your starts the rest of the week though. Um, what, who are some of the other players that are contributing in big ways that need uh, a little bit of light shine on them while we got this platform? Yeah, we got a pretty good pitching staff. We got Mateo Villanueva. We got uh, Sean Cannon. We got Taylor Worth. We got our shortstop patch Moore. We got our second baseman, uh, Shane Cannon. We got our center fielder, uh, Jack Gould. So, I mean, all those guys are super legit guys that deserve the spotlight, too. So I'm excited to get going with them this season. I know it's early, but I'm, we're ready to go. Well, it's early, and I think everyone's a little chomping at the bit because weather has been messing with at least some degree of everybody's schedule. Nobody has evaded it at all. Uh, baseball players are oftentimes, you know, speaking of rain, caught with delays and downtime and baseball sometimes can be a very slow sport. And I know they're pitch clocks and try to speed it up, whatever, but it's still, it's got a fair amount of downtime. So what, uh, what do you guys do to kill that downtime as a team? Uh, there's gotta be something that you're doing in the dugout right now. There's gotta be some game you're playing. gotta be some, something you're doing uh, to help fill those innings, especially for you as a pitcher, you, you, you have to have some downtime. Yeah, I mean, we, we still we still go to the field. I mean, like we I know the field right now is still rained out, but you know, we make we make whatever we can, you know, we're still out there throwing, you know, we're we're practicing, we're doing pickoff plays, and you know, we're just trying to get along together as a team because you know, everybody's young. So this team's kind of new, everybody's very new. So making sure that, you know, everybody's on the same page is definitely key for us. So during that downtime, it's important that we do stuff like that. Well, so you're talking youth, you're talking for you're already four and two and you're happy where it's at. But are you saying that that means that, yeah, you're happy, but that with that also the ceiling is going up for where your expectations are or are your expectations already sky high because, you know, hey, we know where our trajectory can be. We just got to grow into it. Yeah, I have a high expectation for this team, for sure. I mean, we have a lot of just talent around, um, obviously, like I said, really young, but you know, this year and next year, you know, we'll have the same team. So I have a very high expectation for these guys and just getting better throughout the season is what we're looking for. So I always look over the schedule and think I kind of know who the rival is because every school identifies 
largely with, hey, those are our rivals. Uh, Point Loma and Coronado have a lot of healthy bad blood. Uh, is it Point Loma for you guys that is the rival, or is there someone else on the schedule this year that you guys have as uh, the team that you're like, hey, that's who we're out for blood for, or if you got to come check out one of our games, come check out that team. You know, it, th- Who is your guys as, as a program rival? It's Point Loma, a thousand percent. And since the beginning of the year, I requested that game. So you'll see me throwing <laughs> that game a thousand percent. I, I want that game. So Point How Loma. Does that, how does that call? Is that via text? Is that in person? How do you go about requesting that from coach? No, I, at the beginning of the year, I went into the coach's office and I'm I'm Point Loma no matter what. doesn't matter. I'm ready for Point Loma. So we're all hyped. I know we're all hyped up for that game, but, you know, I, I'm ready to go dominate that game. Where does that mentality come from for you? Is that how you have you always been that, hey, I, I I need to be that guy? Or do you have to reach a certain point where you're like, get yourself worked into that? Because that's that's a pretty go getter attitude. Yeah. Every time I step on the mound, I'm always thinking that. And even at practice, I mean, I just I just always like to think, you know, I'm the dominance. That's what I that's what I strive for. So it's always kind of been a part of me when I was young, even when I was in nine, you playing at Tecolote, you know, I wasn't the number one guy, I was the last guy hitting, you know, all that stuff, but I've always kind of been ready to go no matter what. So, you know, just always having that mentality is key for me and my play. A little bit of dog in them. Uh, you watching any college basketball or, or not a basketball person? Yeah, I'm watching a lot right now. I was just recently watching the West Virginia game. So that it was a big one and the Virginia upset. It was pretty big. Did you? Yeah. The, OK, did you watch the Virginia, the ending of that where the kid just turned and chucked it down the court? Yeah, I, I mean, I saw the highlight. I didn't watch yeah, the game. No, but, but you watched the highlight of it where the kid makes the turnover at the very end. Uh, yeah. Is that that like I know we're, that most people don't turn to to Max Murray from Coronado High School for national basketball punditry, but we got you here. You're on our platform. Is that the biggest mental boo boo that you've ever seen ever in sports? Because that's got to be like that might go down as legit. I I don't think I'm being hyperbolic when I say that could go down as a top five. What the bleep was that guy doing of all time? Yeah, that, that's got to be the biggest upset ever. I mean, just watching that, even on Instagram, it's like, come on. But, you know, it happens. It, upsets are always – I'm always happy for upsets. I always like when brackets Oh, I get, love them. I uh, live for – the uh, the Princeton game. Princeton beating oh. the University of Arizona. Kid that scored the go-ahead bucket for Princeton. Ryan Langborg, class of 2017 from La Jolla Country Day. Let's, Let's go. go. I love the upsets. I love them. Live for it. Uh, One thing, though, that probably you don't want to be upset wise is once we get around to the playoffs, I'm sure that you want to be the number one seed that cruises and crushes through it. Folks, this is just another one of the great student athletes that you got to go check out this season. We will make sure that when we uh, well, obviously, we will make sure to include the date when that Point Loma game is because we can guarantee that he will be the starter. But we'll also make sure we include his social so you can follow him and get the heads up on all of his other times. He's going to be taking the mound this season. Max, let's make sure this is not the last time you are on this show. Also, we will come check out one of your games sometime soon. Thank you very much for being on with us. Please go support him. Go support the Islanders, and we'll talk to you guys soon.